say to us, then as the Lord we have it, we will. I will sing it as the program proceeds. The Lord of God, I saw some things and then I began to began to ponder on it in my spirit. Not a vision now, so to say, but I just saw some things that were happening and then especially in the body of Christ and um, I began to think about them. But I want to ask you a question today. I believe we are all children of God. We are all Christians. We are all lovers of God. So I've come to you today with a question. What exactly do you think is the sign of a true minister of God? This is a question we must answer. This is a question we must ask ourselves and it's a question we must find answers to if we actually want to save ourselves in this generation. There are many things that defines a man of God. There are the major things and there are the minor things. But for you to secure your life and your destiny, I will advise you to find the signs that is what? Major. Are you with me? There are minor signs, there are major signs. But if you must secure yourself, look for what? The major signs. A man of God can come and minister and by grace, you can see people falling on the floor. Are you there? You can see people rolling. You can see people shouting. But the truth is this. Can we say that that manifestation that we have seen is a major sign to know a man of God? You can come to minister, you know, as a minister of God, and then you see, see somebody who is blind, you pray for the person, and this blind man can now see. That's a wonderful thing. But is that the major sign? Is that the major sign? So if these things I've mentioned are not the major signs, then what is the major signs? Meanwhile, a true man of God also should be able to do all these things. Am I right? God should be able to do all these things through him. But these signs that we have seen, can we call them the major signs? I was so sober, I was just thinking. So what exactly is the sign? Because the truth is this, till Jesus comes, new ministries are going to be evolving. That's the truth. New ministries with different names, different overseers, different pioneers, different visions. But how do we know that of a truth, this one is sent from God? I will give you one major sign. And I want you to hold on to it and never forget it. Are you there? The devil can fake manifestation. So a man that got power from the dark kingdom can come here now and begin to minister. And you see people shouting, ah! A man that is working with Satan himself can come here now and raise a lame man from the wheelchair. And you see the man jumping, I can walk. But those signs, though they are part of it, but they are not the major signs. If you truly want to stand for God 
in this perilous time, you will need to find that which is major. Look away from the minor and begin to focus on the major. Are you there? A child of God, the one that is sent from God, must be able to transfer the life of God to the audience when it comes to ministry. Are you with me? Ministry is life-based. Are you there? So when you minister to people, you are you may be using your words as a means of communication. But spiritually speaking, what you are doing is what? A life-to-life -life communication. Are you with me? So I can know a man of God by those that are committed to him. Are you there? Those people that are following the instructions of this man or this woman, what are they becoming in Christ? Are you getting what I'm saying? It's beyond the physical things you see them do. You have to check what level of transformation has taken place in the life of those that are following them. Are you there? By their fruits, you shall know them. Jesus did not say by his fruit. He said, by their fruits. Meaning, they are not one, they are many. I speak to you in spirit and in truth, in all humility. Those people who are not saints, but yet are ministers, are more than those who are saints and are ministers. The fake is more than the original. But unfortunately, everybody is saying something. Everybody is pulling the crowd. So can we measure the truth by the number of gardens that we have? No. So if a man is truly sent from God, what do you check? The first thing to check is what? Uh, check the life of those who are committed to his instructions. Those who live by his instructions. What are they becoming? Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm saying this to help somebody. Because you may begin to grow to that point where you start assuming that ministry is all about people falling down. Of what use is a prostitute who fell down and rose to go back to prostitution? May I not fall if there's nothing to change in my life? Are you there? Nothing is changing. We are falling. For what? I like to tell you, it's not only the power of God that makes people fall. When your expectation is too high, look at this. If there's a man of God coming and uh, maybe you have not seen him before, are you there? And you are so anxious to see him. If he comes, that anxiety can mix with your emotion and you will fall. So if he says, hey, you will fall. But yet there's no what change. There's no transformation in your life. Are you with me? Okay, many of you have witnessed it. I've ministered before and people fell. Am I right? So I'm not talking down on it. If I'm talking down on it, this is something that has happened when I'm ministering before. I'm just telling you to know that that is not the major. They are what? The minors. A generation that focuses only on the minor cannot be major with God. Are you there? There are... <laughs> Jesus said... There are vessels unto honor and there are vessels unto what? Dishonor. Vessels unto honor are major vessels. Vessels unto dishonor are minor vessels. 
So if a man focuses only on the minor, he becomes a vessel, but unto dishonor. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you don't know how to identify the truth, you may camp with the fake. And you will be so convinced that you will spend your entire life propagating what is not real. We all must know the truth to save ourselves from deception. Are you there? Now listen to me. The weapon the devil will be using in this season to get the Christians is the weapon of deception. Many people will come in the name of the Lord, but yet they have not been with the Lord. It says, if they have been, they came from us, but they are no longer for us. So that he can quote the scripture does not make him what? A man of God. Check is what? His fruits. Fruits has two sides. Are you there? Number one, their personal fruits. That's the person's life. Are you there? And number two, the other dimension of fruit is the life of those that are committed to what? To following that man. So you check the life of the man and the life of those that are following him. So when Jesus was saying, by their fruit, he was not only saying by the behavior of the preacher. No. He's also saying by the conduct of those who claim to be following these people. I get what I'm saying. You cannot be following Jesus and yet your life is patterned according to worldliness. It's not what? Possible. I went to the bedroom yesterday and the Lord came to me. I ran out of it. I ran out of the bedroom. <laughs> I shouted! I ran out. <laughs> Meanwhile, when God wants to come, he doesn't say in the next five minutes. No. You don't need to prepare. Are you there? You just come. The reason I shouted was the revelation that came. Are you with me? The Lord came to me yesterday and he said, Son, there's only one glory. I said, okay, sir. He said, there's only one wisdom. I said, ah, but we have the glory of this world. Are you there? We have the wisdom of this world. We have, why? He said, there is only what? One glory. He said, what you call the wisdom of this world is the wisdom of God perverted. I shouted. <laughs> when I heard that, I shouted. I ran. I ran out of the bedroom. I picked my daughter. I quickly... I wrote it. Then I went up. Because if I forget that, I will cry. <laughs> what you call the wisdom of this world that sponsors sin is the wisdom of God. What? Perverted. So when you receive the wisdom of God and you pervert it, you begin to what? Promote the flesh. As you make use of that thing. Are you there? So the wisdom of God perverted becomes what? Is what becomes the wisdom of this world. That wisdom that exalts mammon. That's the wisdom of this world. So a man can receive something from God and yet what? Perverted. Perversion here means pollution. Are you there? Listen to me. Everyone is a vessel. Am I right? But the vessel has greater works to do. Because if I pour a pure water into a dirty vessel, if you, by the time you are pouring out the water, what will you see? A mixture. Am I right? So even if God is giving you the truth, 
if your vessel is corrupt, by the time you are releasing that to the next. Are you getting what I'm saying? I told you an experience one time of how God can tell a minister by this time tomorrow 20 people are going to get a job. But because the vessel is corrupt, the man will now say, now 20 people with 20,000 naira should run out now. And they will run out with 20,000 naira and the next day they will be happy they have gotten the job. They will think it is that money that brought the job. They don't know that the money was not in the equation. The man had dead. But because God had told the man, it has to happen. I get what I'm saying. So what we call the wisdom of darkness is the wisdom of God perfect. May I not pervert your wisdom, O God? In the name of Jesus. May I not pervert your wisdom? May I not pervert your wisdom? In the name of Jesus. Let my let let I want to be a clean vessel. In the name of Jesus. Now look at this. Jesus was speaking to the people and he said, If you pour a new wine into an old wine skin, what will happen? Huh? What will happen? It will just burst. Are you there? And you will waste the wine skin and lose the wine. So what does it mean to be an old wine skin? Old there is not referring to ancient. It's not referring to how long. It's not saying, well, a wine skin that has been in use for so many years. No. Old wine skin as used there is a corrupt vessel. Are you there? So if you pour the new wine, the truth, the new wine is what? The truth. Into a corrupt vessel, the old wine skin. What will happen? You will lose the wine. So many times when God speaks, the word came pure, but we gave, when we are delivering that thing, it became a mixture. Because there is something wrong with our what? Our vessel, our container. And when God knows that your vessel is not pure, there are things that he will not reveal to you. Are you there? Because he will not want you to what? To pervert it. So, sacred things of the kingdom will not be committed to your hands because you, you have the tendency of what? Of perverting them. Are you with me? So, I told you, the first sign to look for in a true minister is what? Their fruit. And I told you, their fruit involves what? Their life and the life of those following them. Are you with me? Number two. Both the true and the false can reveal things. Are you with me? You see, a, a false prophet can come now and say, by this time tomorrow, something is about to happen in Uganda. And of a truth, you see, the exact thing the man said is now what is happening. But for the fact that the prophecy is true, does not mean the man himself is operating by the spirit of truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen to me. You see, spirits do not know everything. The knowledge of a spirit is based on the realm in which that spirit is operating. Are you there? So, a spirit that is operating in the, maybe in the first heavens now, are you there? Knows things around that place. Are you there? Now, when the devil took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple, what did he say? Bow to me, I will give you all what? Those things are, is in charge of those things. Are you there? A false prophet cannot reveal to you the things of God. There are sacred things of God. Are you there? 
those things cannot be revealed to the one that is false. It can only be revealed to who? The true son. So if you check them, preachings and the teachings of a false minister, they can't teach you the deep things of it. They don't have it. They cannot even lie about it. They don't have it. Are you there? This thing I'm teaching you now, if you pay attention and you now go online to listen to some people, you will know where they belong. You will know where they belong. They can't teach you. You see, the testimonies of God is with the sons of God. There's something we call the testimonies of God. Are you there? For instance, during the ministry of Moses, the Lord came to Moses and said, you know, Moses asked the question, he said, what do I tell Pharaoh? Who do I tell Pharaoh? Because Pharaoh will ask me, that who sent you? So if Pharaoh asks, who sent you? What should I tell him? And God said, tell him that what? I am as what? Sent you. That I am became what? The testimony of God that who? Moses what? Received. Every testimony that God gives to you has two sides. I said it in the online teaching for those that follow the teaching. There is the side that relates with you and there is a side that relates with only God. Are you there? If God comes to you and he says, I am the I am that I am. That thing is a sacred thing given to you because you are a son. I get what I'm saying. So that revelation of God is a part of God given to you in form of mission. The Bible says the secret things belong to God and the little revealed to you is what? Is yours. So that name that he has revealed to you becomes what? Your own testimony from the Lord. Meanwhile, this testimony has two sides. If God says, I am. He becomes to you and he introduces himself as the I am that I am. Now this is what it means. It means that in your own work with God, whatever you say God is, is what what? God is. Are you with me? So if you believe God can, he what? He can. Are you there? If you believe God can't, you what? Look at this. As powerful as Moses was, when God called Moses, Moses said, well, I'm just a stammerer. He did not believe God could take away the word. And all through his ministration, the stammering word remained. That's the I am that I am. Your faith defines what you get. If you believe I can, I can. If you believe I can't, what? I can't. Are you there? Meanwhile, the other side of the I am that is peculiar to only God is that God is unquestionable. Are you there? I am who I am. That one is personal to God. I can do what, what? I can do. Are you getting what I'm saying? Can we say, Jesus, help me. Help me to be real. In the name of Jesus. Help me to be real. Help me to be real. In the name of Jesus. Help me to be real. In the name of Jesus. Shabala to vrehiza baladaba, embre fanatic evrohosi baladaba, e raba baba lebron dosi kabala brehiza baladaba, e kato shabilati meno se brahi balata, bende vrehiza balento vrehiza balabalaba. Oh God, help me, help me, help me. Rabbi netu zebra habava, nento sabira fanante zebrehis kabala brehiza bai. In Jesus' name we are praying. Listen to me. I'm going to end up end this, this session now. And I'll come up again for the last part of the teaching. Please listen to me. Um, there's this belief. Somebody asked me a question today. They said, if somebody is on the is on the bed and is about to die, say Jesus, forgive me, forgive me. Where is he going to? <laughs> it was a serious question. It was a, a girl of maybe 12 or 11 that asked me the question. He said, We heard that the last thing you do before you die is what God will use to judge you. Ha <laughs> 
I now told him, I said, you see, this formula of when I'm about to die, I will quickly ask for forgiveness. Are you there? I'll quickly ask for forgiveness, and the Lord will forgive me. I'll make heaven. Wait. That formula is a dangerous formula. You see, it is not automatic. Lord, forgive me. You must get a feedback. Lord, 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 I want to die. Now. Sir. Sir. The gate of hell is open, though. Are you getting what I'm saying? That formula is dangerous. When I'm about to die, I will quickly ask for forgiveness and I'll make heaven. The forgiveness you asked for, did you get a feedback? If no, you know where you're going to. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. When you ask for forgiveness and God forgives and you now die, you are going to heaven. What if the Bible says we ask and we do not receive because we ask and give? What if that your God forgive me, God forgive me? The process you are asking are amiss. The pastor there thought he had led you to Christ. When we get to heaven, we will understand that <laughs> some of these formulas we use on here did not work. Because the one that asked, that said, God forgive me, God forgive me, did not get a feedback. And we assume that what is going to help. You know, I, I taught the children today, so it was a very funny class. The question they asked me, if I'm not exaggerating, should be more than 10. By the time one is done asking questions, I say, any other question, Tiri can raise their hands. <laughs> My message ended maybe around 30, 30 something minutes. They began to ask questions on the message. The entire message ended one hour plus. It was a serious question. Meanwhile, I was so happy for those people who could ask that kind of question. Because they were picking from, they so much asked that they said, Sir, the Garden of Eden, is it here? Where is it? <laughs> you know, children now. Where is the garden? It was a serious discussion. Have you heard the, the, the case of this 144,000 in the Bible? There's a lot of controversy. 144,000 are the people that are going to be saved. So people are wondering, hey, after this 144, now how many is God going to pick from Nigeria? <laughs> Even on those states, it's more than 144,000. Are you there? Let's not be confused, sir. Look at this. Death was not sent by God. Death became the part of the equation based on the punishment of man. So the moment God said, unto dust you have been formed, unto dust will you return. That statement was what brought death into operation. If you study your Bible where you discover that one of the things that God is going to judge on the last day is death. Death is going to be judged. Death itself will be casted into the lake of fire. The destiny of death is hell because God did not really send it. It was by permission. What God said brought him. So God was not aware of what this nonsense is doing. Killing people everywhere. You get what I'm saying? So death will be judged. But the moment rapture starts, death ends. The moment rapture starts, death ends. So, once rapture begins, if you like, go and take Gamali 400, you will be bouncing like a stone. I get what I'm saying. Because death has ended. Death has been arrested at that time. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now look at this. You see, what is rapture? Who will be rapturable? This question we must answer so that we can be saved. Are you there? Hmm. Rapture is not automatic for everybody. See, rapture is like a spiritual magnetism. Are you there? 
As you begin to follow God, there's a nature you carry. So when rapture starts, it can what attract you because of the nature you have carried on the strength of your devotion to God. Magnet will not attract wood. It will only attract metal. So if rapture is a magnet, that means your faith turns you into a metal. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that is why not everybody will go. Because a wood will not be attracted to a magnet. Never. Are you catching it now? So the moment rapture starts, death hurts. So the saints of God, those who were living their life according to the will of God, will what? Be rapturable. To be rapturable means to go with the rapture. Are you with me? So when those people go, those whose life are not in accordance to the will of God will be what? Left on earth. Are you there? Now, these people who were unable to go with rapture will now be left alone. But the only chance God will give them is for them to pay by their blood. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you, are you with me? Look at this. Please let me see. Now look at this. Those people that were rapturable, Jesus paid for them. Those people that were left will pay by their blood. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whosoever believeth what on him should not perish. Perish means should be rapturable. Are you there? Are you there? <laughs> but have what? Everlasting what? It is this life that gets attracted to what you call rapture. Are you there? So the life is infused into you so that rapture can what? Can get attracted to you. So that rapture can affect you. Are you with me? Now look at this. After rapture had taken place, some people will be left alone. Am I right? Remember death as stopped, right? The moment you wrap your hands, then certain demons that have been shamed will now be loosed. So they will... They will I don't know if this message is a scary one, but... Uh, <laughs> should we continue? Okay. A sister is ready. <laughs> you will not die, yo. Just pay attention to. <laughs> Those demons that have been chained will now be loosed. So they will be given free access to come to the earth. Now, the assignment for coming is to torment those that could not go through rapture. So they will come to one of them. Meanwhile, listen to me. Those people that were left alone, they were not left alone because they did not know God. Though. Are you there? They were not left alone because they cannot speak in tongues. They, they were not left alone because they don't have conviction that God is real. Though. Look at this. So when the demon comes to them, they will come with swords, knives, different kinds of things to injure people. So they will just go to one person and say, just deny Jesus and we'll leave you. Maybe that person was one of the Christians. Ah, no, 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 I can't deny Jesus. I can't deny Jesus. They will hold one hand and cut it. Are you there? You know the blood will still be coming out. They hold the other hand. Deny Jesus. No, 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 I can't. Never, my Jesus, my Lord, save me. Save you. Now you have just the leg. Everything is now uniform like this. There's no hand to flip again. And the blood is gushing out. And you cannot die. Imagine that pain now. You know, if death 
is a possibility. It's easy. The, the only thing is, John, please just cut my head. Cut my head. Let me go back. No. That is not a reality again. Deny Jesus. No way. No, I won't deny. They will use their sword to open the person's stomach and bring out the intestine. Deny Jesus. No, no, no. You know, biologically, breeze should not blow on your intestine. Once it gets stiffened, you just die. But because death has been arrested, you will not die. So you are walking like this, you are packing. Oh, no, 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 no. They will come to you again. Deny Jesus. Say, no, no, no. They will cut one leg. So at this point, walking becomes hard. Your intestine is in your hands. You can't even hold it. They cut the other leg. Now, the full human being is now looking like a wood. The intestine is out. And he cannot die. Are you there? Blood everywhere. So they leave that one. This one seems to be stubborn. They go to another person. Most people will deny Jesus because of the pain. Some will be rugged. Just out of those who prove to be rugged, that God will now select 144. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not like God will now. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This 144,000 selection is after the rapture. Because not all of them will deny Jesus. They were not left alone because they are not Christians. It's just they are, they are see, mo- most Christians who will be left alone will be ignored because of their disobedience. It's disobedience that will affect many Christians. Not that they don't have conviction about God. Disobedience will see disobedience will make them too heavy to be lifted by rapture. So even if rapture wants to leave them, they will fall. So out of these ones, God will now select 144,000 men who paid by their blood. Like that one now, the intestine is out, but he said no. That one, are you there? Are you with me? I'm just saying this to clarify something. Have you read the story of Somebody asked me another question today. Sir, if you die, where are you going to? Is God going to judge you immediately? There's a story in the Bible that answers the question. The rich man and Lazarus. Are you there? Both of them died. One thing is common to all of us is this. Both of them died, but where they found themselves were not the same. The Lazarus found himself in Abraham's bosom. The rich man found himself where? In Hades, right? Okay. In that place, there was torment, right? But the torment in that place is not as much as the one in hell. That one is just a waiting. Yes. Yes, I will say, I will tell you. So, look at this. The, the rich man found himself in Hades. Hades can also be called Gehenna. Are you there? They also call it Gehenna. It depends on the language. Hades, Hades Gehenna is the same. Hades is the waiting place for those people that will eventually go to hell. In that place, you can't pray and say, Lord, no, no, it's, the window is closed. You can't say, I want to go back to rectify. No, it's closed. Remember the rich man said, ah, let me go and tell my family members. God said, they have Moses. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, the Hades is for those who are qualified for hell. They will stay there waiting for judgment. Abraham's bosom is for those who are qualified for hell. They will stay there. Are you, get, are you getting what I'm saying? But in Hades, the difference between Hades and heaven is that the difference between Hades and hell is that people in Hades, they blame God. People in Hades, what? They blame God. They curse God. Ah, oh God! I will get out of here. The reason they curse God in Hades is because the reason for which they found themselves there has not yet been explained to them. 
because judgment is not yet passed on them. Are you getting what I'm saying? But those in hell are not blaming God. No, no, no. You go to hell after judgment. The judgment is, is going to be a mass judgment. Somebody say, ah, God is going to take a long time. No, no. That judgment, that mass judgment, you don't. The Bible says, one day before the Lord, just like what? 1,000 years. Okay. So, the people who are destined for hell will wait for their judgment in Hades. Those who are destined for heaven will what? We wait for their judgment where? In Abraham's bosom. Are you with me? Meanwhile, in these two places, you can see one another. The demarcation is just like a large pit like this. Are you there? Those in Hades, hello, are definitely going to where? Going to hell. But the reason they stay there is because judgment has not been passed on them. So after judgment, they now know why they are going to where. So no one goes to hell ignorant. No. Because by the reason of judgment, you know you are qualified for where you are going to. Have I answered your question? Are you with me? So the rich man now told um, Lazarus, please, can you dip your hands into water? And just drop it into my mouth. What did? What was the response? What was the response? The mercy of God. You see, salvation hence after death. There's no salvation in heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the truth. So if you must be serious with God, be serious with Him now. The life you have is a proof. That salvation is still accessible to you. Are you there? The life you have now is a proof that what salvation is still accessible to you. The moment that life ends, salvation ends. The door closes. The door of salvation closes when you when you stop breathing. Are you with me? Yes. Thank you. Do you know that those students ask that question too today? I'm not joking. You see, the, the, the message, I'm going to ensure it is sent to the YouTube. You will see Pastor Sadebayo in children's class. You just once you see one message having children, is that message? They asked. What small boy are the verses? What is paradise? The same question is asked. Paradise is a word that can be used interchangeably with heaven. Are you there? Paradise, instead of saying heaven, you can say paradise. Paradise is heaven on earth. Are you there? There's something they call millennium reign. I don't know if I've heard about that before. When Jesus will come back to this world, are you there? With his people. There will be no war. There will be peace. That sphere, that environment, that reality is called paradise. Where Jesus is the king ruling over the nation. That environment is paradise. Are you getting what I'm saying? That, that's also heaven. That's heaven. So what is heaven? What is hell? The Lord differentiated these two to me many years ago. I will, I will tell you today. What is heaven? Heaven is God's presence. Fully present. That's heaven. Eh? Heaven is what? God's presence. Fully present. What is hell? Hell is God's Presence fully absent. <laughs> so the difference between heaven and hell is the presence of God. That's all. So even from this earth now, you can meet me. It's your choice. <laughs> Hello. Eternity starts from time. 
Are you there? Eternity begins from now. Where you are now, I said it in the program we had. You were in that program. What's the title of that program? What's the team? Okay. Where you are, eh? thy kingdom come. The program was aired at Cecilia. No? I said it there. Where you are now is where you are going later. Are you there? If you are not in heaven now, you are not. You can listen to the message of it so that we won't press it for that. Amen. I want to clarify something before I round off this session. The, the thing is this. What is the difference between Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost? It's a concept that many of us... Are you there? What's the difference between Holy Spirit and what? Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, hello, please pay attention to me. Holy Spirit is the spirit of, anytime you see Holy Spirit being used, they are referring to what? The Spirit of God. Zion, you are talking like you know it. Have you read it in, I think I, I wrote that in um, Spirit Pills. That was like the last quote in Spirit Pills. Now, Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Basically, when you see the Bible use Holy Spirit, they are referring to what? But when you say Holy Ghost, they are referring to the, the, the Spirit of... Look at this. Let's split it first so that you understand. Holy Ghost. What is a ghost? A ghost is the, uh, the image of somebody that has died. Are you there? So somebody died yesterday, you now saw the person again coming today. What do you call that person? Look at this. When Jesus died, they are catching it now. <laughs> are you seeing it? Eh? When Jesus died, after three days, they saw him walking. Are you there? That Jesus they saw walking is the Holy Ghost. That's why they don't touch him. Are you there? That Jesus they saw is the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of Jesus. You want that that? Are you getting what I'm saying? So, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Meanwhile, these two are still the same. Are you with me? But in a bit to just differentiate them based on the experience. So they call one Holy Spirit and what the other what? Holy Ghost. Let's bow our heads and say, Jesus, help me. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Rebananto sebra haba nata balida. E caparanda fizeli bravo sabra hadaba. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Oh God, le cabarus cababalante brehiza balada. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. The powerful enough to change a nation. Help me, Jesus. May I not labor in vain? May my life not be a waste to God. In the name of Jesus, may I not labor in vain, Jesus. Help me, help me, help me. Help me, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we pay ourselves to two? Let's pay ourselves in two. Um, did you please come up for prayers? Come up for prayers.